Welcome in to Extra it wasn't Time. Clear. Uh, Ali's here, uh, Robbo here, Jan as well, and Frank. All good, Jan? We friends? We are always friends. I've never been to Las Vegas, so just invite me to your new show. Oh, fantastic. I, I well, you you are cool. friends, you are friends, but... Dan, you are friends, but it could not last long because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because you don't. No, know that's very happen. true. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I didn't even see that as a threat. I want to be here. Yeah, it's twisted. Uh, that's very true. Qu quick question. Uh, yes. So, so we'll, we'll go together to Vegas. Yes. In yes. Basically, this this comes from a discussion where we talked about what's going to happen tomorrow, and Jan says uh, I'm likely to have a show in Las Vegas in, with Harlan leaving. I think a, a pop was, star. <laughs> that you're going to be a pop, a pop star. star. That was it. Not a show. Star. You're going to be a yeah. pop star. Yeah. A re I can have a residency. I've seen oh, you on oh, the old. Oh, Oh, karaoke. Yeah, karaoke. Yeah. You've karaoke. Been good. Be good. Um, so, what exactly is my role going to be in all of this? I think you just got to look after my fans. Okay. So okay. just to make sure you know that <laughs> I can. You be his fluffer. <laughs> Basically, I can just okay. walk, walk yeah. down the strip. Yes. You yeah. can mop his brow and things right. like that. So I'll be press officer slash executive assistant. Can I yeah. be an executive assistant? There's words I want to use, but I can't because I get sacked. Right. How was Ipswich? Chaperone. Yes. That too. <laughs> how was Ipswich versus Bristol City more entertaining than these Champions League matches? Why? Uh, because uh, it was played at a great intensity. There's yep. a lot riding on it, as there is in the Champions League. But yes. it was a game that was the ball was get played forward quite quickly. Yeah, uh, a lot of chances. Yeah. Uh, great atmosphere inside the ground. But the, the Champions League games were good, but. They were foregone conclusions once the, the, the first goals went in for both Bayern and PSG. Yeah, and what's it like in the Championship when you're playing all these games so intensely, two or three a week? Well, it is like we are describing the game. You go into there, there are 46 games, and you come in November, December, and you're not even half of the season. You know you're going to play over Christmas, and you go someplace, and, and, and you're so close to the crowd. Portman Road, I played there many times. This is my lucky, well, my first game goal in England, I scored at Portman Road. So it's, it's a great place, it's intensity, and I will recommend the football fans who only look at the, the big leagues, have a look at the championship. It's very, very entertaining. Uh, but I, when I see games like that, I, I was just thinking of pain, I thinking of uh, center halves without teeth. Remember, I played in the 90s, and they were knocking you down from everywhere. Uh, when Robbo played, or oh, Robbo, were you in the 80s, or I can't remember? Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, no, I didn't play in the championship, so oh. I wouldn't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> It was in the 80s, though. It was in the 80s. Uh, just a reminder, the championship is exclusively on ESPN yes. Plus here yeah. in the States. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a quick answer. Is Bayern season considered a success if they win the Champions League but do not win the Bundesliga? Yeah! Yes. Super! Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I yeah. think that pretty much sums up everyone. Frank, Eric Dyer started ahead of King Ming Jai tonight. Does Thomas Tuchel see something we don't? Because surely a Spurs reject cannot be better than the best defender in Italy last season. Um, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that Kim is coming back from uh, maybe a minor injury, so he's not ready yet, but he's going to be uh, competing against Dyer very, very soon. I think you have somebody else also coming back very soon as a centre-back. So, um, I think Dyer only played because he's, uh, he's fitter than uh, Kim right now, and that's the only decision. And, yeah, I, I really think that when Kim is back to his best, there won't be any competition, I think. Dyer will go on the bench. It is uh, Kim was name was of the best defender in the world at the beginning of the season. <laughs> he didn't lose everything to uh, to be competing with uh, somebody who was the fifth choice at Tottenham. Um, with all due respect for uh, for, for, for Dyer, uh, we, we had a good game today. By the way, uh, I think I think Kim is above above him and many others. And, uh, uh, don't, forget, yeah. don't forget about yeah. the okay. fact that Upamecano mm -hmm. that. Basically, the problem is that he's had a thousand yellow, uh, red cards over the last month, and yes. so yeah, and, and, and he, he's taking himself out of out, out of the rotation so much so that then Eric Dyer becomes an option. And but when they sign Eric Dyer, he must not have been an option to be the starting center back in the most important game of the season for them in Champions League. I don't think that would have been the plan of Thomas Tuchel, but this is where we are but with Bayern Munich. With Eric Dyer, you have to look at the. It all depends on the manager who's had him. For some managers, he's been the number one pick. For a while, he was Southgate's number one pick for the England team. Mm. When Jose Mourinho was at Tottenham, he was the number one pick. He played every week. It was when the new manager came in, Poster Cogley went, no, I don't fancy him at all, and dropped him to the, to the bench and didn't really want to play him.
But I think that uh, I think that w- what you said, uh, Frank, about Kim. Uh, yes, he was fantastic last season, but something he missed on the way from Italy to Germany. I mean, I I have not seen one of the best uh, defenders there. Upamecano, you know, when he's playing, he will always make a, uh, a mistake. Uh, and Tuchel has also come to the season. He's now he's leaving after the summer, and he I think he will now you will see him now at the rest of the season just make some clear choices. He will put people on the bench. Uh, Davis was on the bench. Yes, uh, he's been a bit w- with injuries and so on. But he put Kimmich on the right back. I think Tuchel, you will see him clearer now, now doing his choices. Am I hundred percent? But he doesn't sure like the licked that... either. He didn't like the licked either a little Exa- while ago. Uh, uh, three, exactly. three or four weeks ago, the lick was a problem. All right, Robbo, calm uh, down. Exactly. Oh, God, but, it's extra but, time. But, it's supposed to be a little more relaxed. <laughs> shouting I, I, at Paul. I, I like shouting that, at Jan. See, yeah, but I can see that uh, that Dyer would play more games than we believe at the rest of the season. <laughs> For Jan, where do you rank Thomas Muller all time in German football? Well, it, soon he will have the most games for Bayern Munich. I mean, that is that is something great. He's won everything. Uh, yes, in the way he plays, his his body somehow. When you look at him, you think he's not Mbappe. <laughs> is he? He's not the guy that everybody will say, "Oh, when I grow up, I want to be like Thomas Müller." But if you have a look at his stats, he's up there with the best in well, Germany. So he will be up there based on trophies, goals, assists top 10 in German football all time. In, in regards to Thomas Muller, it reminds me of, you know, the blow-up dolls that they have at car washes or yes. car yeah. dealerships. Yep. <laughs> do you know which country invented those? Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, well, well, there, there you go. go, you see. Mm. And yet, this guy who seems like he's all over the place, the best thing about him is that all over the place, seemingly, is tapping the ball into the back of the net. And what he's also understood about his own game as he has gotten older, and perhaps he isn't the first-choice striker, he's found a different ways to be effective in and around whoever the feature striker is, in this case, Harry Kane. So he's become a, a great assist guy that wasn't really particularly part of his game early on in his career. That's an evolution of a player, understanding where I am in my career and how can I make myself still effective. He's done that for Bayern Munich. One of the best football brains that... Germany have ever had. That's, would, that's why he's still yeah. playing oh, yeah. and still playing well. How would you rate your football brain? Uh, my football brain. Um, it's it, had, it, had its, it had its moments. Really? Yeah, it had its moments. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I, could lost, I could have lost the head every so often, but you know, on the other, I, th- I thought about the game. <laughs> For Robbo, do you think any team out of the Manchester City or Madrid can actually win the Champions League this season? Yes. Arsenal. I think Arsenal. Arsenal. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. I think they've got a tough game against Porto, but I think they'll win that. And the way Arsenal are playing at the moment, I think they could beat anybody. They've beaten Liverpool at home. They've beaten Manchester City at home not so long ago. Uh, they're playing great football. They've got a good, solid defence as well. I think they need to be put under pressure a little bit more by the opposition, by playing a little bit further forward or, or getting the ball forward quicker. Uh, is there a question mark over the goalkeeper? But overall, I think Arsenal got every chance yeah. of winning the Champions League. I think so. Uh, Jan, you were obviously were at Bramall Lane yesterday. Uh, how much did Arsenal impress you? Well, I have to start with how much did uh, Sheffield United depress me? Uh, oh, but because they were, they were they were they were terrible. But but Arsenal at the moment, I mean, it's a 31 goals now in seven Premier League games, uh, mm. playing with a fantastic self confidence. There is something about them at the moment, and. Uh, uh, could they win the Champions League? Of course they could. The only thing that I would say that would, would be against them, I think in the Champions League, the experience of Champions League, we've seen that with some great teams that you need one, two, three seasons before you win that, for example, no, that Porto. You saw that Porto away, they had a weak game. Will they do the same if they go further in the quarterfinal? Will they have that away game that uh, would w- would take them out? So I think that uh, experience will speak, of course, against them. And that's against them, against Manchester City and Real Madrid. And even Inter went to the final last season uh, going further. And even Bayern Munich, to be fair. So I've just said in the you know main programme that they will go to the final. Uh, you certainly there, did, there, yeah. There is you a consistency. Not. There is a there is a consistency, uh, and and we see that before winning a Champions League, you have to lose one one final. City, it <laughs> happens to City. It happened to Chelsea. It happened to many many clubs before. It's like 
a redundance where you have to experience a defeat in a final to build up your experience and and then so after you have a chance to uh, to win it well i don't think they are as good as they were last season but uh, maybe they can win next season <laughs> but uh, i don't <laughs> think they're gonna win this season i don't think so i don't really get what your point was frank <laughs> Arsenal haven't had My the point experience is, uh, is, uh, of, of getting to the final. Arsenal losing, didn't have that's that experience. Right, that's right. Come on, R Robo. I mean, we have football brain. It, yeah, it hasn't. Yeah, that's, that's that's why he he asked the question. Get it, that's why he doesn't yeah. get it. Absolutely right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think <laughs> exactly. you definitely argue yeah. it better than Can last you all season? please show a little respect to the pop star? Please. Um, yeah. uh, right. Ali, you've seen a lot of these players. I'm going to go for you. Okay. Start bench drop. These English Englishmen based on their form this season. Okay. Kane, Bellingham, Foden. Wow. Mm. Ooh, hey. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's good. Ooh. Wow. Good luck. Good luck, Ali. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start Jude Bellingham. Oh, I'm going to bench Harry Kane and I'm going to sell Phil Foden. Wow. Yeah, well, because wow. we're talking about the whole season, right? Yeah, and so Phil Foden, what we have seen from him yeah. over the last two months have been really impressive. Yes. But if it is the totality of the season, I'm going to take Bellingham. Right. Kane, Kane at some point was in a record break. Bellingham's pace. been a bit quiet last month or so, though, hasn't he? All right, Dan. He just said over the course of the whole season. Yeah, so no, but he cited Foden maybe didn't impact much hmm. at the start. Belling obviously did, but he hasn't made much of an impact recently. But I would absolutely go with yeah, that. Yeah, but for Thank you, Rob. Well, I wasn't asking you. Well, I'm answering. <laughs> Harry Kane, and then right, and at the bottom, Foden. <laughs> wow, OK. Uh, uh, may as well go round. Jan, do you agree? Uh, I think that today uh, uh, the group of uh, experts here in the studio has been a bit diverse. We have on one hand a pop star in Las Vegas and a football <laughs> brains on the other side. So uh, wow. this would, uh, yeah. So I, I will give I will give uh, uh, um, Bellingham a rest because I want to rest him before the Euros. I will get okay. uh, Foden in there and uh, and and Kane. Uh, still a bench. I can't even read. I need to my glasses. No, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. we are based on their form this season. So I will drop. I will drop Bellingham for the moment. I would wow. start always Kane wow. as a striker's union, and then I would put Foden go. on the bench because he can come on with his fantastic left foot. He changed his mind. Kane was going to be on the bench at the beginning, <laughs> then he put his glasses on. Uh, yeah. that, oh, that made all <laughs> that, the difference. Yeah, that made all the difference. I don't want him to be my coach. He's <laughs> yeah. going to take me off when he puts his glasses on. <laughs> Frank, what do you think? I 100% agreeing with uh, Ali Moreno. Uh, Bellingham, hey, 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 Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. me, Frank. All right, <laughs> for Jan, when interviewing a losing manager after a game in which they were beaten badly, like yesterday, do you try to be diplomatic about how bad the result was or just come straight out and ask why are they terrible? Well, it was a very good and question finish because, him. yeah, I, I was special. It was especially yesterday because uh, Chris Wilder, I know him. I've been to Sheffield United I, when it was in the first spell. I like him very much. But you have to be. I, I will start critical. I will start with was that a matter of uh, raising the white flag because it looked like they they were giving up. But at the end of the interview yesterday, I said uh, when we had some critical questions about what was going on and how he motivates himself when you're down, mm. because I was sitting just behind the bench and we were five nil down and he was still running in the coaching zone. I was I was wondering how, how he motivates himself. But at the end, because I played for Sheffield United, and so I, th I guess it's about the relation you have to the manager. But I say we, we have one thing in common that we are deeply in our heart want Sheffield United to be better. What will you do to make them right. better so i think there's constructive as critical but still you got, you need to have a bit of empathy for them because straight after the game when you're losing six nil and you hardly touch the ball it's it's even tough for the manager of that stature how would you think the robo would do in these sort of situations <laughs> yeah well he got a foot he got a, he got a great football brain so i, I don't right. think yeah. i will i could start there are you are saying that i'm going to ask the questions i'm going to be asked the question no i think if you're asking the questions i don't think you would oh, be yeah. as empathetic no. as you've yeah. seen me do interviews and you always said i'm too nice to the to the yeah, yeah but that, that's when they're just being that's when they're here they haven't just lost six nil and then you got you turn up yeah see Earlier on, Jan said he was depressed by Sheffield United's performance. Did right. he say that to Chris Wilder when he went? Yeah. I was depressed by that performance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, what, you say, you know, what are you going to do? I, I thought it was a great before. question, Jan. Great yeah. question. Wow, yeah. there you go. Um, who wins the Ballon d'Or first? Mbappe, Vinicius, Vinicius Jr. or Haaland? Uh, should we go to Jan? Let's go to Jan. Haaland. 
Haaland? Because he should. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Frank, Frank, but, but, but Frank and me, Frank, Frank, Frank and me, we are now like the Eurovision Song Contest. It's a com competition we have in Europe where all countries are voting for their own neighbors. Right. So uh, yes. I guess Frank will say Mbappé, <laughs> and I and I have to stick with Haaland to get him a vote. So I think that's where we are now at the moment. Uh, where are you, Frank? Uh, nowhere. You know that how much I love uh, oh, yes, Ballon d'Or, yes, so allow me yes. to not answer to the stupid question, you know, leave me alone with that. <laughs> okay, that's fair <laughs> enough, that's if, good. Yeah. If indeed I will be in Las Vegas with you, Madrid. I will be in Las Vegas with you. <laughs> if, if Mbappe indeed goes to Real Madrid, it's not going to be an opportunity for Mbappe, Vini Jr. It's Mbappe or Vini Jr. Mm. Uh, and in that case, it would be Kylian Mbappe who would be the first choice. But then who would win 2024? That's going to be interesting. If Bellingham starts scoring loads of goals, well, you know, well yeah, right Bellingham, Real Madrid, you got City, Phil Foden. If England go on to win the Euros, I don't mind getting it. Yeah, why not? It's, a, it's, a, good, it's, only, it's, it's a good. It's a good short time. The no, but the Euros has got a massive influence, yeah. isn't it? If yeah. you go and show up, if Manchester City win the Champions League, mm -hmm. and then England win the Euros, yeah. all right. Declan Rice Foden. might win the Euros. He might win the Champions League. He might win the um, Premier League title. Yes. He could be the man. Most definitely. He could be oh, definitely Declan like Rice. That uh, sounds like a Jorginho argument. Oh. No, hang on, no. Hang on. <laughs> Declan Rice is a lot better than Jorginho, uh, let no, me tell you. No, okay, but don't, that, that don't get problem. angry. That, that is, a, of course, the problem with uh, Erling Haaland. He's Norwegian. I mean, the only yes. one's not at the Euros now is the Vatican and Norway, so he will have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Final question. How much harder, Robbo, is it to commentate a match off a monitor as opposed to being at the stadium? In, do you know what? In my view, sometimes it's easier. I, I go against the grain. I quite like doing things off the monitor. Because you've got such a big football brain? No, because <laughs> uh, it's you've got no other distractions around you. Right. You've got the, the, the TV. He's, you know exactly what the people are half. watching. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> when you go to a game, you've got no room. Sometimes you're in a terrible chair. Yeah. Sometimes you, the pitch might be too far away. So you're looking at a monitor here, then you're looking at a pitch down there. And if your eyesight is uh, short-sighted or long-sighted, right. then you've got a problem doing both. And it's fair to say you're not really a man of the people. No, I don't like people. No, exactly. <laughs> so it's better if you do. <laughs> I don't like people around me. You know, I, I like. I like Harness going is into the a best policy. Yeah, going into a studio yeah, with yeah. Darkey or John yeah. Champion or Derek Ray yeah. or Rob yeah. Palmer. That's lovely. One other right. person's enough, but not the football yeah. fan. No, no, not football. And, and no. three and three man booth. No, 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 no. never do that. Uh, exactly. I think that brings us to the end of what has been quite an eclectic <laughs> show. It must be said. Uh, we will be back tomorrow uh, for more of this nonsense to reflect on City against. <laughs> Copenhagen plus 300 <laughs> against Leipzig. <laughs>